Uh, okay. Clearly, part of it has been technology development and technology implementation. If you go to Recology site, for example, in San Francisco, uh, they've done a marvelous job, as have other cities across the country and across the globe, at applying uh, best available technologies to recover more of the stream. Um, that's to me. That's the the, the main thing that's happened, and, and they're now looking at anaerobic digestion, they're doing more composting, so they're looking at the whole stream as a resource and trying to, to recover the resources. And I guess, again, I'll just, unfortunately, some of those resources, they, they simply trade and, and don't actually recover uh, in, in a responsible way, but they've, they've certainly made, made huge inroads. I just think there's, a, there's still a lot left on the plate that we can, we can do. Uh, Mike, I, I know the history, a little bit of the history of the, the, the of Recology. Uh, they keep changing their names. Uh, it used to be two they called scavenger companies, uh, Sunset and Golden Gate, back in the just uh, early 60s. Good company, but mostly collection and dumping. Uh, but uh, you, you have to remember that... Uh, the, this company, they merged and they formed another company, which became eventually re renamed Recology. They have, they are written into law to be the only service providers for this whole system in, in the city and county of San Francisco. So there's, there's no competition, mm -hmm. and uh, so money, money is what's. Uh, uh, with all due respect to my colleagues at, at Recology, uh, this is not a comment to be. Uh, insulting to them if they're listening it's just that if you don't, if you have money that's being uh, that's funding all of these toys all of these things um, then you have the possibilities of doing more and more that's on one side and then the other side you have a, a very aggressive uh, in, co in quotes uh, uh, community the city the citizens of San Francisco for the most part uh, uh, have become very uh, 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 interested in, in, in conservation, recycling, and all of the all of the good things that, that we think are good things. So they they have demanded on the one side they have demanded uh, certain steps on the on the waste management business, and also the city has a group of people working within their the department of uh, I think it's environment. I don't remember the name, but it's the uh, the group that's, that deals with solid waste that's also very uh, well-versed and uh, interested in, in, in uh, waste diversion. So if you put all of those things together, community demands that they want to participate. The city itself uh, has the, the willpower to solve the problem, and then the funding is available, then you have a, a very good combination. I'd just like to add on Luis because I think he made a very good point. So we, I alluded to only one seen. Mike. My goodness, I've been speaking for about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so I mentioned uh, that uh, technology. There's some good benefits to having competition among technology providers because it brings the best, hopefully, brings the best to the surface pretty quickly. And you hit on you hit the nail on the head. There's typically a note competition at the service provision level, and I alluded to it earlier as well. Most cities let 10 to 20 year contracts with the people managing the waste, and therefore you don't get changes. You get stuck, you often get stuck in solutions, uh, one type of solutions, over a very long period of time. So somehow I think there needs that needs to be a more dynamic relationship so that the best solutions uh, can, can be injected. Uh, and that's that's a hard thing to do when you have a ten to twenty year contract. Okay. Yeah. This is a lifetime contract. At infinite, at infinite, they are written into law, Joe. They, the, this company in San Francisco is a single one. They do not go to bid. Uh, they, 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 no, no competition is, is is allowed by law. Uh, I think they've made some great points. I think uh, actually a quote from Mike: "If we care so much about what we make." how we make things, we should care even more about how we unmake them. I've never really looked at it that way before, but that's a, it, it's a heck of a way to look at it, and I think I'm going to steal that from you if you don't mind, Mike. Um, <laughs> I found out a while ago that Mike is like the best quote machine. I've actually <laughs> used a couple of his quotes and some other things, too. Um, I think that as, as Luis and Mike both alluded to, uh, it really comes down to money. And when you're looking at a situation uh, where someone could have a monopoly 
where it's legislated that there can be no competition, um, I'm actually shocked that could happen in the U.S. It uh, it really doesn't doesn't really uh, lend itself to opportunity, which is what we all claim to be about. Um, yeah. As we know, when it comes to technologies, the best technology rarely wins out. The best funded technology always wins. So if you have the right people behind you and you can get the right banking groups together, you can make just about anything work. Whether it functions versus whether it works are two totally different things. <laughs>